What are your thoughts coming back here yet again? Hmm. Well, this is the most sacred uh, land that there is, I think. And uh, I think people feel it. Uh, taps is always the hardest thing yeah. to listen to. I think the, the, the overpowering sense that you get from this entire ceremony is was captured to a degree by the by the president and the stories of each person. I mean, remarkable courage. Uh, I know the saying is that only the heroes are, are buried here, but those guys were heroes, and and there were remarkable. Uh, the whole generation. I mean, Tom Brokaw appropriately labeled it the Jewish generation because. Mm -hmm. These citizen soldiers started the war in 1941, and they went all the way through. There was no one-year tour, no flying over, flying out. You went, and you didn't come back till you got the job done. And I think uh, the, the, I think anybody watching this today has to be just overwhelmed by the by the mission, by the size of it, the scope of what they did, and the imminency of your own death, knowing that the moment that door dropped, the moment you approached that beach, the chances were really high that your life was going to end. That's sacrifice. And uh, the president's speech, uh, also President Macron's speech, both very unifying, so moving uh, to hear the president of France saying, France will never forget. And of course, they do not. And if you come to Normandy, you know they, they are forever grateful for what we have done. And President Trump, I think for the first time in his presidency, uh, resoundingly speaking of this North Atlantic alliance that defeated Hitler, freed the world, um, and, uh, and can protect this country. Uh, from from future harm. Well, I think, Joe, the key question will be um, what is the policy that is instituted over the course of the next months and years? Wow. Uh, what is said here today has been very different from what has been enacted and played out. I think we should, this is obviously a dramatic and right an extraordinary moment in the flyover. Yes. Willie Geist here in New York. Uh, we're watching the flyover there in Normandy, France, as the President of the United States and the First Lady, joined by French President Macron and Mrs. Macron, look out at the sea where 75 years ago today, American troops, British troops, French troops landed on the beaches of Normandy, Joe and Mika. Uh, so, uh, Secretary Kerry, uh, uh, continue. Well, I, I think that uh, this moment is particularly relevant to celebrate this now because it represented such an extraordinary uh, effort by allies to come together and stand up for freedom, to stand up for democracy, to fight for a common set of values, and to recognize what was at stake. And I think there are those currents loose today in the world uh, which raise a question again about fascism, a question again about authoritarianism, a question again about not coming together but breaking apart. Brexit, Europe. So, uh, you know, I, I applaud the sentiments expressed. expressed. Test is going to be what happens over the course of the next months. Is this really the policy, and where do we go? Willie Geist, uh, do you have a question for the secretary? Uh, yes, Secretary Kerry. Good morning. Um, I'm just curious as to your personal no thoughts. I didn't uh, realize your family connection uh, to the events that followed D-Day. Uh, you had a special ceremony yesterday. Uh, could you tell that story a bit, Mr. Secretary? Well, I first came to this beach uh, two years after the war in 1947. My father brought me here. I was four years old. And it's one of my very, very first memories, literally, was this beach. And I didn't completely understand it. My father told me what it was. But I saw 
some of the burnt out hoax and detritus of war on the beach at that period of time. And I came here many, many times after that. I, mean, I came here uh, for the 50th, the 60th, the 70th, now the 75th. But most importantly, I came here alone or with somebody from the family, very special, uh, and, and just walked around and learned the history of it and uh, read most of the literature on it. Uh, it's, it's a great lesson. I mean, honestly, uh, as a veteran, as somebody who, who fought in a war, uh, there was such a difference between the war we fought in where you, you would wait to be ambushed, you didn't know when it would happen, uh, and so there was a certain impermeability to that, a certain comfort. Here, man, you saw what was happening all around you. Higgin boats blowing up beside you, tanks sinking into the water, the guys in front of you just disappearing from view and never rising again because the water was too deep. I mean, the, 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 the effort to just step out of that boat, cold, wet, uh, seasick from several days at sea, and carry on, uh, it's amazing. You know, Mike, uh, we ran a package earlier this week leading up to D-Day at the 75th commemoration as the presidents of the United States and France continue tributes to those who fought this war 75 years ago with bombers overhead. Mike, um, it was very interesting. Uh, we, again, mainly starting with the 40th anniversary when Americans would come over and celebrate uh, and, uh, and, and it would be a glorious celebration. I found it so interesting uh, hearing the words of David Brinkley in 1974 on the 30th anniversary, reminding Americans that there was a time when the United States military was honored, but that politicians... had made such a mess of Vietnam that that was not possible. And the veterans that would come over and actually speak to the cameras saying they couldn't believe that people actually appreciated what they had done here 30 years ago. So much has changed now where now it is a military that is the one institution revered by the American people. Yeah, you know, in the flyovers, you just saw uh, part of what you were just speaking to, Joe. Uh, the World War II uh, uh, era planes that flew over, slow, lumbering, easy targets. And we had the 21st century version of military weaponry just flying over us at less than supersonic speed, but filled with more power in one plane than they probably had in the entire fleet that was out here uh, 75 years ago this morning. But I would have to tell you, listening to Secretary Kerry, who I know, who has been here since he was a child, uh, would that it were possible for every American to walk this hallowed ground, I deeply believe we would be living in a different country today. Because if you walk this ground, and if you look at the look at the tablets, the stone tablets, the stars of David, the names carved out in there, the states represented, you see who we are. This is who we are. This is the United States of America behind us. People of all, men of all faiths from every state, every region of the country came together here. The dead are here, the living, the elderly living were represented here today. This is who we are. We have lost our memory. We have lost our memory to Google and Snapchat and Twitter and this instant gratification age that we live in. This is who we are, not Twitter. This is who we are. It is hard to walk here and not feel a moved. sense of unity, yeah. uh, an extraordinary, of course, being moved, but also an extraordinary uh, sense of unity as, as a people and also as a member of this alliance. Alliance, absolutely. Um, the pictures try to do it justice, but being here is different. It is an unbelievable experience. Um, 
And as we look at the sacrifice and the bravery and the commitment and the unity that was shown by the young men um, pouring out of those boats. Um, That's the French. Uh, it's beautiful. It's okay. also uh, the French, the French oh, it's really, it's so beautiful. Hard not to keep in mind the elements of that day and how much um, coincidence was on the side of the Allied forces, from the weather to l luck in, you know, in many a, ways. There was an enormous amount of, I mean, I, no, obviously, right. nothing <laughs> diminishes the, no, no. the courage and, and the thinking and the planning and the preparation, which is astonishing that they were able to leave port, go back to port and come back. And, and the Germans didn't know what was happening. But you talk about elements of luck. It happened to be at, at a time when the generals in this region had all gone to a city south of here and had convened there for the weekend. Rommel had left his headquarters, driven by car all the way to Germany to, for his birthday, mm. for his wife's birthday, I guess, mm -hmm. and, and celebrated it and, and was gone. The Panzer Division that is was poised somewhat, uh, I gotta get my geography right, but about east of here, mm -hmm. I guess. East, yes. Yeah, did not move and could have come in to counter. I mean, there are all just so many different coincidences. The weather, the break in the weather. You, you, you uh, and Mike had also talked about the, the extraordinary misdirection play that the United States had, uh, had enacted against the Germans. Stunning, and it began way ahead of time with counterintelligence turning German operatives, agents, making them double agents, putting misinformation back into Germany and into this, making sure they really believed that the invasion was going to take place at the Pas de Calais, hmm. which, which, uh, you know, further up the coast. Mm -hmm. And so they had young boys here and older conscripts in these, and they had German soldiers there with their Lugers ready to shoot them if they didn't stand and fight. But, uh, you know, it, it really all of which was the consequence of Hitler making one fundamental, enormous, catastrophic decision, which was to open up the Second Front, declare war against the Soviet Union and, and Stalin, and therefore have to put so much of his air power and firepower. So by the time the, this invasion took place, we controlled the air, air completely in France. I think only two German airplanes were, were were you know, airborne during the course of that, and they made one or two passes, and then they took off. Famously, uh, in, you know, famously uh, shown in the Longest Day movie. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. extraordinary events like that. Or, but that was always true. They right. always play in like that. Well, you know, and a footnote, a footnote, of course, was that from the time we entered the war in December of '41, of course, the Germans. There's the Beautiful. Go ahead, Mr. Secretary. Well, the missing man yeah. formation where the one plane takes off and yeah. goes off. So we had, uh, of course, we came into December of 41. I believe uh, the Germans went into Russia in, in June of 41. And so from the moment we got into war, of course, Stalin was pressuring Churchill and FDR to open up that second front. Correct. And always felt that we waited a little too long. Right. Uh, yeah. Because again, this is one thing that we should mention today as we're talking about the defeat well, the, of, the, of Hitler. The, the, Soviet the sacrifices Union. Soviet Union. made yeah. by the Russian people throughout World War II You hear a base figure of 20 so million horrific. to 30 million people. Russia alone died. and and. Uh, and Russians are sensitive to that, and they should be sensitive they should to be. it. They, they always uh, feel that they never get the credit for their role in winning World War II. Well, uh, it, it could not have been won the way it was without them, and there is no doubt as we sit here and remember the heroes and the sacrifices uh, but, but from, again, from our, what I think, our allies. What I think is important. What, what, what they sacrificed on the Eastern Front. Absolutely. but. Uh, what I think in, in big terms, what is key to take away from today, and it's relevant to today, as we see facts being erased from the public dialogue, as we see uh, extremism being embraced in certain places, as we see uh, really elements of fascism reappearing, 
uh, by virtue of the one ideology, statism, lack of individuality, all these hallmarks of fascism. It is appearing in Europe, and ironically, at the very moment that we're here celebrating this, and the British will be here tonight celebrating mm -hmm. at Juno Beach, uh, Brexit is occurring. And for the last two years, NATO has been under attack. The value of the EU has been attacked. Mm -hmm. The EU came together not as an economic program or some fly-by-night thing. It was the outgrowth of World War II in order to stop Europeans from killing each other. That was the fundamentals of this. So we need to remember that and why there, there was such an historic value after centuries of, of millions of people dying. Finally, we created this unified entity and that unified mm -hmm. entity represents the Western values that these men died for. Absolutely. We have to remember that. Mr. Secretary, Secretary thank you so Secretary. much for being with us. Thank, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much for thank your you. service to this Join country. Us. Thank you. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.